Substance 3D Modeler is a hybrid sculpting app that allows you to sculpt in VR, on the desktop, or jump between the two. A headset is not required to use Modeler, but as this release is introducing Quest Pro feature support, I'll be focusing on a VR workflow. This video will be a highlight of some of the features used to make a go-kart sculpt. If you're interested in learning how to use all of the tools and features in more detail, please check out the tutorials on the Adobe Substance 3D YouTube channel. Everything shown is done in VR, although file management, importing, and exporting currently need to be done on the desktop. I'm beginning this sculpt with a couple layers already placed down. For this sculpt, I regularly make new layers to work with as it gives me the most flexibility. I want to make some body panels, so I start with a simple shape and gently nudge it with the warp tool to get general proportions. I can turn this new layer into a subtract boolean to use as a tool to cut complex shapes out of the first. Live Preview helps to visualize what the subtraction will look like before applying. Boolean settings can be applied to multiple layers, so I can see how they all interact. After hitting Apply, I get these clean parting lines. And once I had tires in place, I could use a cylinder shape layer to get a good matching shape. So for this wheel, I can take advantage of two useful features. Symmetry is a property of a layer, and it affects all tools being used on the layer. In this case, I'm using radial symmetry to cut areas for bolts. And I'm using both mirror and radial symmetry for these support sections of the wheel. Repetition is a property of a layer or group, and it repeats the layer, in this case, around the middle axis of the scene origin. I use radial repetition with a high count to start making treads for this tire, and I only need to edit one of the treads. Grouping a repeated layer causes the layer to repeat around the group's origin. By using a combination of grouping and different repetition settings, I can create an effect where the treads are both mirrored and radially repeated on the tire, all as a non-destructive setting. I'll use the same method for filling in the rest of the treads, which allows me to edit them in relation to one another. I then group the tire and line it up carefully where I want it. I like to use the same tire multiple times so I can make this tire group into a link, and this will make every copy an instance and all edits will be shared. I can continue adding details to the one tire, such as this bolt here. I'll drag scope the bolt into the tire group, repeat it, and then move it into place. For this air valve, I'll make details from several layer copies, group it, and then add it to the tire in the same way. Because the tires are linked, the new elements are all shared. Modeler allows you to import meshes into your scene. For now, importing a mesh needs to be done on the desktop. In the file menu, click the top option to browse to your mesh, and its name will update at the top. Once in my scene, it can be interacted with via the select tool just like a layer. To edit the mesh as if it were clay, I first need to convert it to clay. After a short wait, the mesh becomes its own editable clay layer. I have a handful of other parts for this engine off to the side here, and I can use these elements to assemble the rest of the engine. For things like this bolt, I can quickly make copies to reuse the layer multiple times. The clay tool has a very unique shape called the spline shape. It allows me to make a sweeping shape between both hands and dynamically change the taper settings. I'm going to use this to create an exhaust pipe. I'll place this down in two sections. Then I'll use techniques already shown to add details. I want to add some more organic details to these cushions, so I'm switching to the crease tool making sure that pressure is turned on. Modeler has some additional functionality if you're using Quest Pro controllers. In the Preferences menu under Spatial, there are these two options. Haptics uses the advanced haptics motors in the Quest Pro controller to give a better physical feedback when sculpting. Advanced Controls changes how pressure sensitivity works. Instead of the tool hand trigger being pressure sensitive, now the pressure changes based off of squeezing your thumb on the angled face of the controller while the trigger is held. The thumb pressure allows for greater fidelity of pressure-sensitive control when using some tools. In this case, it allows me to smoothly taper the crease tool. And this is the finished sculpt, all completed in VR using the Quest Pro.